Okay, so we are in the process of building an oven here. So I just want to show you kind of what I've done so far. So I got these cinder blocks and uh, made it round. So it's four feet across from here to here, here to here. And actually I kind of broke off one of the ends to make it so that you're, I was able to easily make a circle. And so I just kind of dried stacked that and then I'll be putting uh, our cob mix, or sand clay straw mix, um, over this. But first I'll put a clay slip over this to kind of be the glue. And so we'll kind of smooth that out. And then I put in some 2x6s, uh, these 2x6 boards going across. And so now what we're doing is I put in these, I put two bricks around to make a ring and use this. This is a, our, this is a basically a cob mix. Well, this, what this is is uh, plain screened loam. So this is basically loam that has nice coarse sand already in it and uh, and, um, and I just add water and it comes out like this. So it's pretty much a ready mix. So I use that as, as a mortar to stick the bricks together. And now what I'm doing is I'm putting in an insulation layer. So I'm using this, I'm using sawdust with a clay slip. So I put in some uh, clay into the wheelbarrow and got it wet, made kind of a clay slip slurry, and then added uh, wood chips. I could have also used perlite or vermiculite um, or lava rock, any nice lightweight material. And, uh, and so we're putting this in here to, and then what this does is a couple things. This keeps the wood from getting hot, you know, because we're going to be having a fire all in here. And also, it retains the heat that are in the fire brick for the floor of the oven. So, we cover the floor with this sawdust. You want to see how it feels, Sarah? <laughs> Tomorrow. Tomorrow will be the big mud day. No. Yeah. No. There will be a whole lot of mud going on. Yep. No. We'll be building you a pizza oven. Pizza oven that'll be able to cook pizza in two minutes. Yep. We said it couldn't be done, but we'll prove them wrong. Yep. Okay, so cover the floor in the sawdust, and now we take bottles, empty uh, glass bottles. Uh, they can be wine bottles, beer bottles, juice, whatever. And we just set this in on the floor. It looks like I need to make a little more. And uh, so we'll be covering all this with the sawdust, and then we'll be putting in a thin layer of cob, um, about an inch thick, and then letting that set up. And I like to do this process the day before I build the oven. So that's why you know this is happening today, and so tomorrow, we'll be able to put in our yellow fire brick down. Okay, so we are now um, in the phase of the oven where we're about to start putting the cob on, on top. So I'll just explain a little bit about what we've done so far. So yesterday we put in the cinder block in a round and then we put cob over the block. And then we have the fire brick floor uh, down here. And then we made a pile of uh, sand here. This is about 30 inches wide and about 16, 17 inches high. So this is filled with rubble and wet sand. And then I made this little uh, mold here. This is uh, one way to do the, the door opening. Uh, you can also do a, a brick archway, um, but we're going to be doing a beehive, and so I think just a nice natural um, earthen doorway it actually will, will look better. And so now we have this mix here. So this, this is a very dense cob mix. This is about 80% sand, 20% clay. 
very dense, not a whole lot of water in it, so it's able to form really compact into a ball. It doesn't have any straw in it, maybe a little bit of straw, but it doesn't need straw. This is just they're called the thermal mass layer, so it's just very, very dense. And so now this here is going to be going over the dome. And it usually goes about the thickness of four fingers. It's about four inches thick. So it's going to be going like that, going all the way around. And then the next phase after this, we're going to be doing a, um, an insulation layer. So we'll be putting, letting this set up. For, I like to let it set up for a couple days, and then we'll be putting a coat of insulation, which will have uh, the, the cob mix, but with a lot of straw in it. And the, the straw is going to create the, the insulation. Uh, I might add some sawdust also, uh, just for because we want it to be very lightweight. And then, and then we'll be uh, sculpting our beehive shape. So um, yeah, so this this we'll be putting the cob over this, letting this set out, and then all this will be coming out. And then, so this mix here, we're just using local Santa Rosa. You want to see how it feels? So you can see really how, how dense it is. It's a lot denser than the other cob we were using before. So, and what, what I'm planning on doing also is once this is all done, I'm going to make a groove in, a, in here and then put a copper tube, like a half inch copper tube, inside the groove and then have it come out here so when the oven's hot, when you have a fire in here, you can pour cold water here, and it'll go around and come out hot water here for tea. Yeah. So, all right, so we're making progress on our oven here. We're working on the thermal mass layer right now. So we've uh, been putting this on. Uh, it goes on about four inches thick, so I'll just show you a little bit. So I like to kind of form it into a ball first to, to compact it. And then, once it's compact, then you just kind of press it in. When you get up high, it's good to get, go up higher so you can really press down on it. Because, you know, this is where you really want to give it some really good pressure so it's really, really dense right in there. So, so we're doing this. We're going to let this set up. I even like to let this set up a couple days before do, uh, insulating it. Just so this can dry out some. Um, and... Uh, so maybe you know by the end of the day I might actually go ahead and make my groove in it because it'll be a lot easier to make my groove today uh, to put our copper tube in there. So it'll kind of wrap around and around and then come out here. So uh, yeah, so we're leaving this little space right in here for the insulation. So all this here will be the insulation over here, and the insulation is so that to help retain the heat in the thermal mass layer. So the heat stays in here and it doesn't escape out. So. Uh, okay, and so then this here, here in front, we're gonna be, um, you know, so this is where we're, we're doing the, the form for the door and we'll be taking the, all this, these bricks out, the wood out, everything, and then so that, that'll be you know, how we're able to make our, our opening for our door and then we'll be making an actual door for it. So. Uh, Okay. Okay. So we are back at our oven. Uh, this has been drying out in the sun now for a couple days. So this is the thermal mass layer. This is nice and, and hard and dry. And we just put the, the copper tube uh, coiled inside the oven here. So I made a groove about two inches thick inside and then uh, put this in. So the idea behind this is that so when this, the, this is hot, we can pour cold water here and it'll coil around and come out hot water here. So we're going to cut that there. So, uh, so we'll be taking out the mold today. We'll be taking out all the, the bricks and everything, holding this up because this is hard. So this mix here, this is our insulation mix here. This is a very strawy cob mix here. And uh, you can also use, we added some uh, sawdust into this tube. You can also do uh, vermiculite for this. You can use perlite. You can use lava rock, any nice lightweight material. So this is, uh, but we're going to use straw because we're also going to be sculpting uh, beehive. And so the straw will kind of help give it shape when creating the, the, the form. So what I like to do is put a little bit of uh, slip on first. 
this together just a little bit wet. And then I kind of created, since we're going to do a beehive, I kind of created a form like that, kind of a little roll. And I'm just kind of start packing it on. Okay, so we finished sculpting our beehive. And uh, it's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Very good. Uh, it's kind of nice that it has nine. You know, the, the Mayan pyramids were all built in nine levels, representing the nine major cycles of creation. So um, this here, uh, so this has been sitting for a couple days, so we're able now to take out the, the sand mold. So we just kind of scoop it out. I put a little bit of clay in the sand so that it would compact well. So there's some clay in the sand here that's a little, little hard to get out, but okay. So uh, yeah, so it's, um, it's ready for a fire to be made. It might actually wait a day before I make a fire, just let it cure a little bit more. So um, yeah, so, and then we'll probably get about four or five fires going in here before we, we plaster it. So that's it. So the oven is now curing after sitting for about a week or so. So we'll be plastering it tomorrow. And they'll be cooking some pizzas tonight. All right. All right. So we are now in the process of plastering our oven. So we've been, uh, it's been drying out for about 10 days or so. And so now we're doing a, a lime plaster. So this is just, I use hydraulic lime. Um, hydraulic lime mixed with sand, so it's about three parts sand, one part lime, and the color is coming from iron oxide pigment. And so, uh, and so we have this tarp up. It's always good to, to work in the shade. Um, you know, canopies are easiest, but if you don't have canopies, you can just get some uh, ladders and a tarp and just you know, tarp it up that way. And so we are putting this on, just using our hands to apply it. And so we'll let this set up for, I usually let this set up for about 15 minutes or so, and then we'll go at it with a sponge and smooth out the, the, the plaster. And then I'll also be kind of burnishing it with I have this little, uh, got this little uh, yogurt lid, and I use this to kind of smooth it out like that. So we'll be doing this, we'll be doing the, the, the base, you know, and the hands and everything, and uh, and then we'll be letting this set up, and then I'll be putting a masonry sealer uh, over this. And, um, or a lime wash. I might just do a lime wash so the oven can breathe. And uh, so, yeah, they made a fire in here last night and did, did some pizzas. So, uh, and then I think when we come back, I'm going to be drilling some holes in here. And then putting, I have these little bees, these little ceramic bees, on wire. I'll be putting that so it'll look like bees are flying around the oven. So uh, that's that. Okay. Okay, so we just did a, uh, a lime wash on here. So this lime wash is uh, basically, this here is hydraulic, hydraulic lime. And I add some iron oxide pigments to it. And I, I mixed uh, some yellow and some tan oxide pigment. And uh, you know, I just paint it on like this. And, uh, and then so when it dries, it dries, you know, much lighter. Uh, this one down here, I did a kind of a masonry sealer and added some um, iron oxides to that also. And uh, if you're doing stones, you have to be sure to put the, some kind of sealer of some sort over the stones first, just so that, so that uh, this doesn't drip and color uh, the stones. And so now, uh, yeah, I made a little door here. All right. So now we, uh, you know, we can make a few more fires, and uh, and we'll be ready for for cooking. So uh, okay, cool.